No, I don't think so. Uh, I think it, I'm hoping that it's a relatively short-term uh, effect that he has. But as far as United States emissions, I think now, you know, I'm one of the plaintiffs in a lawsuit against the federal government in which he is now the first named uh, defendant. But it's now much easier for us to win that lawsuit because he's taken steps which will, if allowed to continue to their uh, full response, would make it impossible for uh, us to avoid dangerous impacts on young people. So um, I, think, um, I think that uh, it doesn't need to be a long-term effect. Uh, he, he's not going to be able to restore the coal industry. It's simply not viable uh, form of uh, getting electricity in the long run. So I, I hope that it's a minor effect and that just because of the clarity that it brings to the whole issue, I think the courts will more likely uh, be on the side of, uh, of the young people against uh, the government. Bom, eu acho que não só com a eleição do Trump, mas também com a eleição do Temer, né? Porque junta o governo brasileiro, os Estados Unidos agora, é, é um entrave geral para tudo quanto é política. Né? Então, acho que, que, que sim, dificulta bastante, porque o que vinha sendo discutido antes, né? a, a política ambiental que o governo Obama vinha discutindo, agora, sinceramente, né? que a gente não vê nenhuma, nenhum sinal de interesse ou de compromisso nesse governo. Então, realmente, assim, a gente vê como um entrave e talvez um retrocesso. Não, definitivamente não. Eu acho que as ações do Trump vão fazer o objetivo de qualquer objetivo de target mais difícil. Não há dúvida sobre isso, mesmo quando você está falando sobre 2,5 graus, let alone 1,5 graus. Então, eu acho que é um problema. A pergunta, ultimamente, é quanto tempo a ação do U.S. vai continuar. Então, nos próximos anos, Uh, the Trump administration is not going to have a massive impact on global efforts. Um, and apart from the direct emission impacts, you know, one of, the, one of the problems that could happen with the US is if it really gets mobilized on pushing coal. That could become a big problem. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so if, if Trump manages to get a diplomatic profile going on carbon intensive development, that could become a problem globally. But at this stage, we haven't seen any really big signs of that. Well, uh, the Trump administration has taken some deeply destructive actions in terms of climate change. Uh, their intention to step away from the Paris Agreement and roll back domestic regulations that were designed to limit carbon emissions uh, is a deeply unhelpful step at a time when the urgency in climate science is ever clearer. Uh, but the reality is the Paris Agreement's long-term goals are a multi-decade endeavor for the whole world. The Trump administration's term is four years, uh, and there's just so much that they can do. They cannot buck market trends in the U.S., which are favoring renewable energy deployment. Uh, they can't change the, the fact that many states, businesses, uh, cities are fully committed to delivering on uh, the Paris commitments and have announced their intention to do so here at Bonn. Uh, so yes, the Trump administration has been very unhelpful. Uh, they're abdicating their responsibility to future generations. Uh, but the Paris Agreement was always about more than one president and one country. So what we've seen uh, since the announcement that the U.S. administration says it's intending to withdraw is actually U.S. states, cities, businesses really stepping up and actually louder than they've ever been before, which I think is incredibly important. Here at COP23, you know, I'm meeting with Governor Jerry Brown, Governor Inslee, meeting with mayors, U.S. businesses to really make sure that they, we're supporting them, that they're advancing. And so I actually think that the world has really come together. And, and it, something that's really important is the fact the market has moved. So 
at COP21, when you had 195 countries say, we're stepping up, we're signing on to the Paris Agreement, we're going to do our own actions, you've really seen that the market has moved, that financing is flowing, that when you look at the price of clean power or solar, wind, it's really, really dropped. So I think it's well within our reach, but we are going to have to work extremely hard. All countries are going to have to work really hard. Canada, not only are we working hard at home, but working hard internationally. Uh, we're, we have a cool face out alliance with the United Kingdom, and we're working to bring countries around the world. We know that the power sector, 40% of it is uh, coal, very polluting. So that's a very practical measure we can say. But it's well within reach, but we're all going to have to work hard. Uh, I'm not sure what the presidency will mean to it, but I can tell you that American cities are committed to being able to not only meet the Paris Agreement, but to exceed it. And what I'm hoping is that in Bonn, uh, world leaders will come out with an implementation plan for 2018, and we all start to know what is expected and that it exceeds the standards that were set in Paris. No. I, I don't think uh, the Trump presidency makes 1.5 impossible. I think that it is um, at worst a disruption, uh, at best a distraction. Uh, everybody else knows at the point on the horizon we're headed to, the markets are moving, companies see their future in a uh, zero carbon, well, net zero carbon world. And so I don't think that any one country or any one federal government, even one the size of the United States, can push us off that target.